The Jeweled Jaguar by Sharon Tregenza, published by Firefly Press. Griffin Tudor wakes up to a nightmare. A mysterious hole in the ground has opened up and swallowed his mother. When she's rushed to hospital, he's sent to stay with relatives he hardly knows. His uncle, aunts and cousin Cinnamon live in a creepy derelict building called The Spike. Griffin's life looks bleak, but things go from bad to worse. The children accidentally uncover a plot to steal a priceless Aztec knife, the Jewel Jaguar. They find themselves hiding from a murderous villain in a labyrinth of underground caves. And it all starts so innocently with the discovery of a secret tunnel. We pushed aside more planks and a pile of wet cardboard. Cinnamon pointed the torch into the corner. Oh my god, she said. What? What? You're not going to believe this. What? She moved out of the way, and I saw a perfectly formed square opening in the wall, and inside the opening, a line of stone steps leading down into darkness. Neither of us spoke for a minute. A secret tunnel, she said. That must be how the fox got in. Maybe it's found a way out again the same way, I said hopefully. Or maybe it's trapped in there, Cinnamon said. I hunched my shoulders and leaned into the hole. Cinnamon squeezed behind me and shone the torch over my shoulder. We could see a curved wall and hear the sound of dripping water echoing in the distance. Awesome, Cinnamon said at last. Awesome, I repeated with less enthusiasm, because I had a horrible feeling I knew what was coming next. A cold draft of air travelled up from the depths of the tunnel. It had the same musty odour as the ruined rooms of the spike, but there was something else too. I can smell the sea, I said. Cinnamon took a deep sniff. Yeah, you're right. You ready? We were on our knees in front of the opening. Her face was a ghastly grey in the moonlight. I couldn't see her eyes behind the mirror shine of her glasses, and that was freaky. I looked away. We are not going down there. Duh, of course we are. I'm not missing out on the chance to investigate a secret tunnel. If you're too much of a wimp. I gritted my teeth. I suppose we could go just a little way in, see where it leads. Cinnamon pushed me aside and climbed through. It's big. There's plenty of room to stand, a voice echoed off the stone walls. I took a deep breath and followed. It was so cold. I shivered and wished I'd brought a jacket. There was a heavy silence inside, a bigger silence than the rotting rooms of the spike. The steps were wet and slippery. Cinnamon lit the way with the torch while I stuck close behind. When she came to a sudden stop, I thumped into her. Now where? she whispered. The torchlight showed the tunnel led to another that went left and right. I hadn't expected that. I thought it would just be one straight opening and we'd trundle along it for a meter or so then go back to our warm beds. Which way? Cinnamon said. Back up the steps, I said hopefully. No. Left or right? You're the direction finder. Really? It just so happens there aren't any maps for secret underground tunnels. I thought for a minute and sniffed again. The salty smell is coming from this side, so if we go that way, we'll be heading towards the sea. That means we might end up in Pythagoras Pew's cave, and we don't want to bump into him in the middle of the night. He won't be there now. It must be nearly three o'clock. We can't be sure of that. Let's turn right. See where it leads for a little way. And then, with or without you, I'm going back. We don't know what's down here. Could be old mines, caves, anything. It's dangerous. Yeah, okay, Cinnamon said. Other tunnels branched off from the main one. It was easy to see that some led nowhere, 
where rockfalls barred the way. But others twisted out of sight around corners, and one opened up into a high cave. When the tunnel widened, we walked side by side, splashing through icy puddles. Okay, that's far enough, I said. Just a bit further, I saw the light beam float ahead of me and turn the corner. Wait, don't leave me in the dark. My stomach lurched. I staggered forward a few feet, my arms outstretched, feeling for the walls. Cinnamon? I thought of the meters of earth and stone suspended above us, just waiting to collapse and bury us forever. It made my head swim, and I felt a bit sick. I struggled to breathe. Come back! I shouted. I put my hand on the wall to steady myself and snatched it back immediately. Slime covered my fingers. I rubbed them frantically on my jeans. My anxiety rocketed. I had to get out. Cinnamon reappeared and, with her, the light. Okay, let's go back. It goes on forever. It's starting to freak me out, she said. But when the beam flashed behind us, we saw that the tunnel seemed to end just a few steps away. Where's the opening? That's the way we came. No, no, it was this way. She swiveled the light and took a few steps in the other direction to be faced with another wall. I breathed quickly in and out of my nose and tried to focus. I think if we go this way... Or wait, maybe it's down here? Which way? I don't know. I rubbed my forehead with freezing hands. I couldn't think straight. The cold and dark made my bones ache and messed up my brain. The plink, plink, plink of water drops echoed in the distance. Cinnamon's teeth chattered. Shh, she said. Somewhere in the darkness, deep in the tangle of tunnels and caves, we heard singing. If you want to know what happens to Griffin Cinnamon, well, you'll have to read The Jewel Jaguar by Sharon Tregenza, published by Firefly Press. <laughs>